Welcome everybody. So this is the first part of our data analysis section of our course. So here we're just going to be going through some of the first steps that you need to take when you are beginning your journey into data analysis of XPS. So the learning outcomes for today. First things first, where can I find some XPS processing software? So we're going to be through going through um, one main software, uh, but we'll also introduce you to a couple of others. Uh, what does everything do? So you're going to need to get an appreciation of what all the different options on the software do and, and where you can kind of begin and, and get going. Uh, and finally, as I say, where do you begin? So the first kind of steps that you need to take when you are processing your XPS spectra and uh, so you can get through without carrying through any errors. So as I mentioned, we're mainly going to be focusing on one software. So this is called Caso XPS. It's a very popular software in the XPS community uh, because it, it's very powerful. It is a paid software, uh, so it's not free, but as I said, it is capable of doing uh, many, many advanced things. So uh, it is, it does represent a, a very good and useful tool for processing any kind of XPS spectra, but there are others available. So there's Avantage. So this is Thermo's proprietary software. So if you have a Thermo XPS instrument, you'll get Avantage with that. And that does have some very powerful processing um, capabilities to escape from Kratos Analytical. Uh, XPS Peak is another free software. There's uh, there's more that will be listed on our, our Guru page. So if you've seen the, the Guru page already about processing software, uh, then there is some, some links in there and where you can find those. But today we're focusing on Caso XPS. So where can I find it? Well, simply it's at casoxps.com. So if you head there, we've got a screen grab here of the, the main web page where you can find a download link. You can download the latest version as well as some other links. So the CASA uh, XPS YouTube channel is available through those links. So Neil Fairley, who uh, write CASA, uh, wrote CASA to begin with, makes a lot of great YouTube uh, videos that are particularly good for some of the more advanced techniques that CASA can do. You can also uh, find out if you've got a site license there. So if you are part of a university, check out the links there uh, to see if you are listed and uh, you can grab a site license from your, your IT department. But you can also run this as a demo version. So you can do lots of the, the processing. You just can't export or save anything. But it's still good for practicing. You can just grab yourself a free version, play around with the software. So if you do have a license, uh, then great. Uh, you're going to need to license your software before you get started. So if you open up your CASA uh, XPS.exe, click on the help option there and then put in your license information. So the username and the license uh, password there and click update. And then you should be good to go uh, throughout the rest of time you are using the software. So this is a very important step and uh, people can often overlook it. Uh, you know, I sometimes overlook it after many years of practicing, um, sometimes can slip your mind, but it is very important that you load up the correct library file. So different instruments will have different sensitivity factors and there are library files associated with the different instruments that will load up your kind of your calibration um, values. So if you're just getting data from someone then just check with the experimental officer which library file you need. Hopefully it should be a default library in CASA but if not then they can email you that and you can just add that manually to your library directory. So first, if you go to the library, so where we've got the, the arrow there or hit F10, and you're going to want to go to input file. And in that tab, there's an option called browse library directory. And then you just need to select which library you want. So for example, if we were using a Kratos instrument, we would open up Casa XPS underscore Kratos.lib. So then you can just click select and then hit load, and then that should be uh, loaded for your session. But you do need to do this every single time you open up the software. Make sure you've got that right library file opened. So that will carry on through your, your processing session. So a quick word on just the general layout of, of CASA. It's kind of got two modes of operation, and it depending on where you click on the main screen, that will change the mode of operation. So if you click anywhere on the spectra, that opens up all of these options here. We'll go through what each of these does in due course. Um, but for now, you can see that those are all available to select. 
and then some of those to the right are grayed out. Whereas if you click on this side, on the right hand side, you will then make those options available and the ones to the left will be uh, grayed out. So getting started, I mean, opening and merging files. Opening files is pretty straightforward, file open. Um, if you have multiple VAMAS files with uh, lots of different spectra from samples that are all in a series, you might want to open and merge those. So this just enables you to combine lots of data sets into a single file. Uh, and it does make it a little bit easier if you are processing, say, large data sets where you might want to copy models from sample to sample, uh, then having them all in one place can be really useful. So, uh, so just remember that that option is there. You can you can merge all of your samples into one. So, a quick word on VAMAS blocks. You will probably hear this term uh, used throughout this course. VAMAS blocks are so on the right hand side here. We've got lots of different rectangles which have got the elements and orbitals inside. So, uh, selected here, we've got zirconium three D for the sample S Z. Um, double click on any of these blocks and that will open up the corresponding spectra in the main window you can also move around with the with the arrow keys if you just want to flip between spectra yeah but those are what the vamos blocks are and they contain all of the information about your your spectra so some of this information is accessible through some of those those options in that um in that bar on the top there's four there's four uh, options here which bring up some of the, the experimental parameters, which are going to be very useful if you are writing a report and you want to remember what the uh, spot size was or, or what the, the x-ray power was. All of that information is stored in that VAMAS block. So I'm just going to switch to our software now. So say here, we're just going to open up, click on the, the spectra to open up these options here. First, I'm going to open up the comments. So the comments has got all kinds of information that you could possibly want. So if we look down here, we have um, the the sample name. We've even got the uh, the stage coordinates it was recorded at, the neutralizer settings, our emission current, the the pass energy, um, and the uh, the dwell time and the number of sweeps. So. All kinds of information that you could possibly want is in there. Similar in, in uh, block info, it's just in a slightly tidier uh, table fashion. Uh, you, again, you've got all of these information uh, available, including the, the source energy, the resolution, the dwell time, etc. So if we click on our VAMAS block to open up some of these options, we can now click on X-ray anode. So again, this will just tell you about what uh, x-ray anode was used this is particularly important in terms of getting the right rsfs so the library files that we mentioned earlier they will co uh, contain sensitivity factors for the different sources that are available so for example um, on this system if we were to have an, an aluminium x-ray anode and a magnesium x-ray anode if we were to change this source label to mg and update that it would then load the sensitivity factors for the magnesium anode uh, but i don't recommend you change any of the values in here uh, just because you know you might forget why you changed them and yeah you can you can bring about all kinds of mischief that way so good for information uh, generally would recommend you leave them alone and then finally in here we have the vamas identifiers so we have things like the block id uh, the sample name and what the uh, the element and the orbital are. So the, the block ID is our column header up here, obviously the sample name, and then we have the element and transition, which will again link into how the, the software opens up the sensitivity factors. It's not the end of the world if these aren't correct, um, but again, I wouldn't recommend changing them because it's, uh, it's good for you to know what um, what element and, and what orbital was, was recorded here. Uh, finally, I just want to mention something called edit mode. So if we toggle this, we can then bring up our sample identifiers. So by default, CASA will usually be set onto this mode. So if you just click edit mode, that will bring up all of your sample names.
Uh, so we're just going to talk about some overlaying and normalizing you can do with, with Casper HPS. It's a really good way to visualize differences in your spectra. So for example, here we have a bunch of carbons overlaid and we can we can see that some have got sort of higher energy peaks, some are single peaks, some are some have multiple peaks. Um, none of these are permanent changes. You can kind of toggle on and off overlaying and normalizing. It's just a really nice way to help you visualize. So if we head back to our software here, these options are over here. So we have uh, overlay F2. So if we say we want to compare anthracene and, and polyvinyl pyrrolidone, we can click on overlay. And what you can see here is we have some very different peak sizes due to differences in the experimental uh, procedure. So if we want to compare how the peaks look, click on the spectra side of things. And then on our sort of lower toolbar here, we have an option called normalize on and off. So if we toggle through these options, we've got a few different ways of displaying our spectra here. If we click this once, then we'll sort of normalize our, our baseline. If we click it again, we will normalize the, the minimum and the maximum of the spectra so that they kind of directly overlay. So you can see the PVP is a bit broader. There's an extra little hump here. And uh, the, the sort of peak center is, is slightly shifted, um, representing the, the sort of differences in the, in the chemistry of that. Uh, of those two molecules. So some of the most important tools in CASA uh, are quantified processing and library. You will probably spend the vast majority of your time in CASA using uh, quantify realistically, but also processing and library, uh, they're very useful. So if we go back to our, our software, so up here we have quantify and this opens up a another window here in which we can do all sorts of things, such as putting in peak models, generating reports. Uh, these will be, we'll go through these in an upcoming part, processing. So um, very few things are actually permanent in CASO XBS. Most of the things that you do can either be up to, up, removed in their individual windows, or you can come to processing here and just reset and remove everything you've done. So don't worry too much if you're playing around with CASA. There's very few things that you can actually do to permanently disfigure your data. Um, the, the processing history tool is quite a good way of just wiping the slate clean. And then finally, the library, as we, we saw earlier when we input the file, this has got information on all kinds of peak positions and energy. So if we were to click on here, we can see uh, the, the peaks that come in this general area. And here we've got carbon. This is the, the peak that we're looking at here. And uh, other possibilities um, are listed here. And you can use your own discretion at figuring out which one is the most sensible. <clears throat> so to summarize, we've, we've uh, provided you with a bit of a example data set just to have a play with. Familiarize yourself with the layout, play with some of the different options. Anything you do can be undone. Uh, the only thing you need to be careful of is if you are editing sample information, probably make a, a save a copy before you edit anything, just in case you overwrite something that contains some important information that you now need. But uh, yeah, so have a play with some of those data or, or carry on with the course if you want to do all of the, um, if you want to do all of the examples at the end. Uh, if you're watching this via YouTube, the link to our Guru course will be in the description, so you can go there and find the files and get practicing there. Uh, and next up, we will have how to calibrate spectra and how to figure out which, uh, how best to calibrate your spectra and, and what calibration points to choose. So see you in the next session.